Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 167 and we're going to be going over the Entity Registration Module. But before we get started, I am Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also make sure to head on over to CodeKarate.com and check out the ebook, look at some of the other posts and videos, and learn more about Drupal. So have you ever had the situation where you've needed to allow users to sign up for a specific event or maybe it's a conference, a webinar, a training, some type of event like that and you want to allow that to happen on your Drupal website? Well that is where the entity registration module comes in. It allows you to easily allow users to sign up for different events right on your site. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Make sure you have this module downloaded if you're following along. And we're going to go ahead and start by installing the registration module. We might break this video into two parts. In this one I'll just focus on just the registration piece. But in a future video I'll cover some of these other modules that come with the entity registration module. Once we have the registration module on, we can of course configure permissions. By default there's only a few administ administer permissions. You'll notice here in a little bit this is going to change. Once you install the entity registration module, there's a menu over here for registration. It's under structure registration. There are two menu items in there. Run it, one is registration states, which allows you to set up different statuses or states for a registration. So by default, you can see that a registration is going to be complete. You could have a pending state or a canceled registration state as well. We're going to leave this at its default, but just know that it's there. Registration types is the next step in the process. Here you can add a registration type. In our case, let's go ahead and just call it a training. Let's say you want to allow people to come to your site and sign up for a specific training at a specific date and time. You then are able, once you create the registration type, to change fields on this registration type. Now there's two different places where you can change how this works. So the first is right on the actual registration type itself. So let's go ahead and add a field. We're going to go ahead and have them specify their name and we'll have this just be a text field. You could also then say you want to know what company they're from, so you want a field for their company information. And you could of course add a whole bunch of fields. The important thing to keep in mind here is anything you add in this registration type is going to be displayed on every registration. So the user is going to have to fill this out every time they want to sign up for a training. The next step is to create a content type that will then reference that registration type. So we're going to add an event content type. And the reason we're just adding a content type called event is because you may want to have different types of events. You may want to have trainings, you may want to have webinars, you may want to have a whole bunch of different types of events. We're going to keep everything really simple, so we're going to leave everything at its default. So we're going to save that content type. You can see there's our event content type. We have to link this content type to the registration type that we created. So we come into manage fields. We're going to add a registration field here. We'll just call it registration for now. And I'll leave the registration type as the widget. Click save and click save again. In this section you're going to be able to specify the default registration settings. 
So as you can see, there's settings that will be applied anytime an entity with this field is saved. So the capacity is the maximum number of registra registrants. You can select if you want it enabled by default. You can <laughs> specify the open and close date and you can specify a reminder a reminder template how many spaces are allowed for each registration or regist registrant and if you want people to be able to allow multiple registrations here's the from email address which defaults to the site email so any emails that get sent for this registration will come from Shane at CodeKarate.com we're gonna leave all those at the default for now just to see how it looks and we are now able to create our event content type so let's go ahead and add an event You'll notice how there's a registration field here for training. Note, remember we talked we could have conferences, webinars, any type of event that someone would want to sign up for. So we'll create a new event called Training Test 1. Give it a little bit of text. Select the registration we want, which is we want a training event. We'll leave everything else at its default and click Save. Now you'll notice everything else looks pretty much the same as a normal node would. However, there is a Manage Registrations tab here. If we click on that Manage Registrations tab, it says there are no registrations, so if there were any it would show up here. And there's also a Settings sub-tab. Here is where we could click to enable registrations for this training. So we're going to click enable. How many people you want to be able to sign up. We could set this to any number and it will limit the registrations to this number. You can specify the start and end times for when registrations should be open. So if you only want registrations open for a couple days or a week or even a couple hours you can control all that from here so we could say it's open from today until tomorrow if you want to send a reminder you go ahead and just fill this out and we could send a reminder saying the event is about to start if you had any links or anything else you could put that in here you can also use tokens if you have the token module enabled. And we're going to leave the rest at its default and click Save. Now you'll see there's another new tab here called Register. Here you can actually come in and re register who is going to sign up for this training. So you can see if I want to sign myself up, I can sign up another person. I just enter the name and the company and click Save Registration. So, now that we have this set up, let's look at the new permissions that are available. Notice when I start typing registration, there's a whole bunch of extra permissions. The important ones are the ability to create new registrations and to register other people if you want them to be able to select a drop down as you see here to either register themselves or another person or another account if they know the username for the account they want to register in this case I'm going to use create new registration and register other people and I want to give that to authenticated users there is supposed to be a way to allow registration for anonymous users however you may need to try out the development version and may need to do a little research because I think there may be a bug or two in allowing, in allowing anonymous registrations. So let's go ahead and now that we saved those permissions, let's go ahead and find another user here. Let's go ahead and go to the site. 
I think I already had another user set up. So I'm going to go here. And I'm logged in as another user now, as you can see. I am not an admin. If I go to this training test one, you can see here's the text. It says this is a training registration test. You'll notice there's a field here. This is supposed to be a link, but it doesn't seem to show up, so we can hide that. But there is a register tab. So if I click register, I'm able to see this is a registration for myself, for instance. can register test1 at test company and say that is myself so I can save the registration it says the registration has been saved can also register someone else if I have if I want to and I just put an email you can put test2 let's go ahead and do that give it a company name, save registration, and it says the registration has been saved. Now, if we go ahead and let's close out of here, go ahead and come back to the site, and I click on manage registrations, you'll see I see the two registrations here. Because we set up that reminder email, that will go ahead and be sent. However, we can also send out an email at any time to everyone on the registration lists. So we could put some text in here. This is going to go ahead and send an email to the two people that are on this list. So if I go ahead and open the email that I received, you should go ahead, you should be able to see that the email was sent. Just waiting for it to load here. And if I pull in the email, it's going to look something like this. You get the email from Shane at codecrowdy.com. It was sent to Shane plus test. And it says, thanks for signing up. Here is the link to the event. And then you could, of course, have whatever you wanted in that email. So as you can see, this is a really easy way to set up registration forms or sign up forms for various types of events on your Drupal site. There's a whole bunch more you can do with it. This is the very basic example. Next time, we're going to go over a few of the other modules that come with it, talk about a few other things that you can do with it, and learn how you can really get this to integrate a little better with your Drupal website. Thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal. Make sure to check out CodeCrowdy.com, check out the ebook, follow me on Twitter at smthomas3, and we will see you next time.